Mimi G here at MimiGStyle.com and today we're going to be doing a sew along of one of my new pre-spring simplicity patterns, 8558. Now let's start sewing view B or C, the pants or the shorts. Now if you're new to sewing or you just need a refresher course, make sure and visit the Sewing Basics video linked in the description box below. Watch that video, then come back and sew along with me. Okay, we're going to start working on view B or C. Now, whichever you've chosen to do, whether you're doing the shorts or you're doing the longer crop pants, it doesn't matter. The sewing is exactly the same. The only difference is the length. I'm going to be making the shorts for this sew along, but again, whichever one you've chosen is completely fine. Now, on the back of the pattern envelope, you will find fabric suggestions along with notions that you're going to need. In this case, we're going to need three and a half yards of five eighth of an inch wide elastic. Let's go over the pieces you're going to need to cut. You're going to need to cut out pattern piece number seven and like I said I'm making the shorts and this is the back of our pants or shorts. You will need to cut out pattern piece number six which is the front of our pants or shorts. You're going to cut out pattern piece number nine which is our casing or waistband, and you're going to be cutting two. And then you're going to cut out pattern piece number eight, which is our pocket, and you're cutting out four. Now that you have your fabric and your notions, we can start sewing. Okay, I want you to go ahead and grab one back and one front, and I want you to place them with right sides facing, and you're gonna pin and sew along the entire inseam. I'm going to pin my inseam and we're going to sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I want you to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. You're going to do your other inseam the same way. Obviously, if you're making your pants, your inseam is much longer. And then go ahead and finish your raw edge with either a serger or a zigzag stitch. Okay, now that you have your inseam sewn and pressed, we're going to go ahead and attach our pockets. So grab your pocket pieces, and you should have marked your markings on each side. So align your notches and your dots. And I'm going to pin. Do the same thing on the other side. Now go ahead and stitch these down using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're going to do it for both your pant legs. Okay, I went ahead and searched my raw edges and I want you to press your seam allowance towards your pocket. Then I want you to fold your front to back, right sides facing obviously, and align your seam lines and your pocket. And you should have marked your dots where you're going to start and stop. And I'm going to pit my pocket too. Okay, now we're going to go to the sewing machine. We're going to start, stop, and backstitch, and then start down here, backstitch, continue down our side seam, and then close out our pocket. Okay, I'm going to start at my hem and work our way up. So I want you to backstitch at the beginning. We're going to stop at our first dot and backstitch, cut your thread, backstitch, and now I'm going to sew around the pocket. You're going to do your other side seam and pocket the same way. Okay, once your pockets are finished, go ahead and turn one pant leg wrong side out and one right side out. You're going to slip the one that's right side out inside of the one that's wrong side out. Match your inseams first and pin. And now we're going to pin the remaining crotch.
Make sure the back is to the back, so you should have three notches in the back, two notches in the front. And now you're going to go ahead and go to your sewing machine and stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance from one end of your crotch to the other. Okay, as you can see, I've sewn my entire crotch and I went ahead and serged my raw edges. And now I'm going to turn my, sh my shorts, or if you're working on pants, your pants, right side out. And now we're going to go ahead and stitch down our pockets to the front. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin right there. And I'm going to pin my pocket at the very top so I don't accidentally pin it to the back. And just baste across the top. Okay, now go ahead and set your shorts or your pants aside. We're going to work on the casing. So you should have two pieces. Place them right sides facing. And on one side, you should have had two dots that you marked. We're going to leave an opening. This is where we're going to be inserting our elastic. And so what you're going to do is, first and foremost, if you plan on doing buttonholes so that you can use your drawstring, then go ahead and do your buttonholes on your one piece, now on your front casing. Now you should have marked those, they're on your paper, so if you have them, go ahead and mark them and make your buttonholes. I'm using a heavier weight fabric, so I am only going to be using the three elastics and I won't be using my case, my uh, drawstring. So therefore, I don't need my buttonholes because like I said, I'm only going to do the three rows of elastic. If you are going to use a drawstring, then go ahead and make your buttonholes now. Okay, now continuing, we're going to stop. start at the top. We're going to stop at the first dot and back stitch. We're going to leave this area open. Then we're going to start again back stitching and then sew the rest of the way down. Okay, now as you can see, we've left this opening. So now go ahead and pin the other side and stitch all the way using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. There's no need to leave an opening on this side. Now I want you to go ahead and fold your casing in half, wrong sides facing. And I'm going to pin. Make sure your raw edges are even. And now I want you to go to your sewing machine and you're just going to run a basting stitch along the bottom. Okay, now that I've basted together my waistband or casing and I went ahead and pressed it, we're going to go ahead and slip it over our pants or shorts, aligning side seams. And I want you to make sure that right sides are facing and the wrong side of your casing is going to be the side that has that little opening. You want to make sure that that's facing out so that when you turn it over, it's to the inside. You don't want your opening to be visible on the right side, although we will be closing it. So I'm going to go ahead and pin up my side seams first. Match your notches. Okay, now you're going to stitch all the way around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so as you can see, I went ahead and pressed and finished the raw edge of my casing. And now we're going to go ahead and create the three rows of stitching so that we can have three individual casings for our elastic. So what you're going to do is you're going to measure down from the top an inch and a half and you're going to make a mark and then you're going to measure down another three quarters of an inch and make a mark and then you're going to sew all the way around creating a stitching line. We're going to start first with the one that's three quarters of an inch from the top edge. Okay, so what I like to do is find the three quarters of an inch marking on my sewing machine and you can do that by just measuring from your needle out and wherever that three quarters of an inch is, you can place a marking. Mine has a little marking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the edge of my fabric stays along that three quarters of an inch marking the whole way around. Now you're going to measure out from your needle an inch and a half from the edge and you're going to make your second casing. Ok, 
Okay, now you're gonna go ahead and cut three pieces of elastic that measure your waist plus one inch, and you're going to start inserting each elastic into each individual casing. Make sure you don't lose the tail end of your elastic. So I'm going to pin it through all layers just so that it don't doesn't slip inside. Once you have one, you can go ahead, pull it out just enough stitch it down together and then you can start on your next casing and then you'll do the final casing. Okay, once you've done your three casings, you can go ahead and hand stitch your clothes, your opening closed. And the last thing that you have to do is the hem of your shorts or pants. I suggest trying them on, making sure that the length is the way you want it and then making any adjustments. I'm going to serge and turn under my hem and you are all done. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this sew along. Make sure and follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Mimi G Style, and make sure and visit the blog MimiGStyle.com. Until next time, peace.